Who gives this woman today to this man in holy matrimony? Ready? All right. Julie, James, welcome to your wedding. Take a moment, look around, and see who's here to support you. This is your family, your community, and your support. These are the people who have committed to you their wisdom, their peace, and their understanding. As a community, we have a responsibility to hold you two up and create a safe haven for your love and relationship to grow in depth, character, and influence. Why don't we begin with a quick prayer? Let's bow our heads. Lord of love, we ask you for your presence in this place as this couple commits themselves to each other today. You are the greatest witness. May your presence be as palpable as you convict the hearts of those here, not only of the love that James and Julie have for one another, but also of the responsibility that we as a community have to show love, support, and wisdom to this wonderful couple. In your holy name I pray. Amen. So your history, like every love, is unique. When you first saw each other, you both had a reaction. And well, you should have, because the relationship started in a very auspicious place, the psych ward. <laughs> Julie, when asked what you thought of James the first time you saw him, you said, and I will quote this verbatim, the first time I met James was at a, clini was at a clinical at a psych facility. We were both in our mental health uh, rotation. I saw him sitting at a desk charting. I thought to myself, OMG, all capitals. <laughs> this guy is so three O's good looking. After that, I did something embarrassing and dropped the lid to my chapstick on the floor and yelled, no, really loud. I guess you could say that was the icebreaker because he started laughing at me. Later that day, we talked during lunch and we got along very well. So before I left for the day, I interrupted an interview he was doing with a patient to give him my number. We hung out later that night and went for a bike ride and played in the park and talked till 2 a.m. It was one of the best days and nights of my life. We've been best friends and inseparable ever since. James, your response to this question was much the same, but from a slightly different perspective. The first time I saw Julie, she was in her scrubs, no makeup, hair not done, at the psych facility, we were both doing our clinical rotations. I remember thinking, she's cute. Our first words were exchanged when she dropped her chapstick and playfully, quietly screamed, which is interesting, playfully and quietly screamed, no. I started to laugh at her and that's how it started. We talked more that day in passing, ate lunch in the break room. She'll probably deny it, but I'm certain I saw her a few times wandering the facility looking for me while I was working. <laughs> So, there was an interest, and a serious interest, and that interest led you both somewhere. At some point, you decided there might be a future together. James, in your words, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly when I wanted to marry her. Shortly after we began dating, I remember sitting on the sofa next to her, looking at her, wanting to tell her how strongly I felt about her, and that I loved her. Keep in mind that we had not said it to one another yet, but I just knew. I had never felt that way about anyone and been so sure of it. It's cliche, but the phrase comes to mind, when you know, you know. And Julie, in your words, when did I know I wanted to marry James? Hmm. Probably when he first told me he loved me, which was 18 days after we started dating. <laughs> I thought to myself that day that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with this guy. And now you are here, standing beside one another, waiting to say the words that were that will seal your future together. So we had to ask two more questions. One, what do you most look forward to? And what do you love most about the other? And here were your responses. James, you said, I look forward to spending the rest of my life with my best friend and making additions to our family. He said, I really don't like this question because it's hard to narrow down what I love about her. But if I could choose the best thing, it would be that we can laugh together. She's somewhat d dorky like me. <laughs> Julie, when asked those questions, he said, what I look forward to most is spending the rest of my life with James and growing as a couple. James and I have plans to continue growing our family soon, and I cannot wait to see James a as my husband and a father. I also cannot wait to travel and have many experiences together. Making memories is definitely up there. 
on the list of what I look forward to. And when you asked, when we asked you what you like most about James, you said, is everything, LOL. But really, I do love his easygoing personality. James gets along with everyone and anyone. He doesn't judge anyone. This is a quality, it's something I find hard to come by. So there you have it. Simple story. You met, you fell in love in like 18 days. And here you are now, ready to become man and wife. A simple story, a beautiful story of love. But I would be remiss as a minister of the gospel not to make mention of what God would have for you in your relationships. There's this beautiful text in Philippians 2. It simply says this, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not look to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the other. And perhaps this is the best text to think about a long-term relationship. Being united, and that unity comes from the humility that you have from serving one another. And interestingly enough, you both chose careers in which you serve other people. So this compassion and service and humility is built deep within you. Make those attributes the same in your relationship with each other. If you can do that, the blessing of a healthy and happy marriage will always be yours. So now, having heard a bit of your relationship, of your love, and God's desire for your relationship, why don't we get the two of you married? Why don't you face each other? So I'm going to say the vows. At the end, you answer appropriately. You'll know when. I'll give you a nod. Do you, James, take Julie to be your lawfully wedded wife, your constant friend, your faithful partner, and your love from this day forward? In the presence of God, your family and friends, do you offer your solemn vow to be her faithful partner in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad, and in joy as well as sorrow? Do you promise to love her unconditionally, to support her in her goals, to honor and respect her, to laugh with her and to cry with her, and to cherish her for as long as you both shall live? <laughs> and do you, Julie, take James to be your lawfully wedded husband, your constant friend, your faithful partner, and your love from this day forward? In the presence of God, your family and friends, do you offer him your solemn vow to be his faithful partner in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad, in joy as well as sorrow? Do you promise to love him unconditionally, to support him in his goals, to honor and respect him, to laugh with him, and to cry with him, and to cherish him for as long as you both shall live? All right. Do we have the ring? <laughs> You'll give one to each one of them. So yeah, you can take one. Perfect. Perfect. All right, this one you'll repeat after me. So, as you place the ring on her finger, James, simply repeat these words. With this ring, I be wed. There you go. He follows directions well, though. Very specifically. Um, and Julie, as you place the ring on his finger, um, just repeat these words. With this ring, I be wed. Now, the two of you have chosen as a couple to perform a love letter and wine box ceremony. This box contains a bottle of wine, two glasses, and a love letter from each to the other. The letters describe the good qualities they find in one another the reasons they fell in love, and the reasons to choose to marry one another. Their letters are sealed in individual envelopes, and they have not seen what the other has written. You have created your very own romantic time capsule to be opened on your fifth wedding anniversary. I recommend that you keep the box in a place 
of honor prominently displayed in your home as a constant reminder of your commitment to one another. Julian James, should you ever find your marriage enduring insurmountable hardships, you are to, as a couple, open this box, sit, drink the wine together, then separate and read the letters you wrote to one another when you were united as a couple in marriage. By reading those love letters, you will reflect upon the reasons you fell in love and chose to marry each other here today. The hope is, however, that you will never have a reason to open the box. And if this is the case, you're to open the box to share and enjoy on your fifth wedding anniversary. Julian James, you may now seal the box. Now, James and Julie, by the power vested in me by the state of California, and as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife. James, please kiss your wife. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. James and Julie Franklin. 